Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Board Games, where we pretty much just do some quick reviews of board games we've been playing. Yes, these are going to be four different games that are more on the lighter side. Uh, we've been playing lighter games recently, just mm -hmm. coming out of the holidays, and so we're going to talk about them today. Yes, but before we do, we do want to mention that in a couple of weeks, we are going to be at Aircon, which is a convention in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going with Watch It Play. We were there last year, mm -hmm. and it was a little bit shorter last year. Right? Yeah, it's uh, going to be four days this time. It's mm -hmm. going to be held uh, March 9th through the 12th up in Harrogate uh, in the UK. So if you will be in the area, we'll be there, and uh, we're just going to be playing games and just kind of hanging out. That's right. It's going to be a great time. Mm -hmm. So we hope to see you there. Yep. Otherwise, we're just going to go ahead and get straight into the games this time, That's it. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, our first title is a family weight game that is published by a publisher who doesn't typically make family weight games. That's right. This is a game called Astra, Astra. and it's published by Mind Clash Games. Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with them, they put out titles such as Anachrony, Tricarion, uh, Perseverance. There are a few very heavy, crunchy titles that they have under their belts. Yeah, Void Falls are newer one that's going to be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. And so this game is under their, their family weight line called Mind Clash Play. Right. So this is supposed to be geared towards people who are not necessarily wanting to play the heavier stuff. They just kind of want something that is still crunchy, but on a lighter scale. That's right, right. yeah. So the theme of this one is basically you are charting the different constellations in the sky. You're mm -hmm. trying to gain wisdom to be able to kind of complete your charting of these <laughs> uh, different constellations and ultimately trying to set collect to score the most amount of points. Yes, it comes with dry erase markers. So it's it's almost like a roll and write or a flip and write, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is a flip and write game. Kind of, yeah. Right? Yeah, to an extent. And so essentially what's happening is there are these different constellation cards that are going to be put out on the table. And on your turn, you're either going to observe the stars by spending stardust in order to connect some of the dots that are on the card, mm -hmm. or you're going to rest. A majority of the time, you're going to be observing. And so uh, there are some rules that come into play when you're connecting the dots on the cards, such as they have to be all connected in kind of one linear fashion. Mm -hmm. If you are the person to fill in the last spot on the card, then you get to claim the card as long as you have enough wisdom to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. And so these cards are going to score you points at the end of the game, but they will also provide you with in-game powers that you can utilize. And every time you exhaust one of these cards to use its ability, you can't refresh it until you rest, right. but only if if the uh, the board is on that specific element that relates to the card, if there's, that makes sense. There's going to be a mechanism where um, it's almost like four seasons. I, I can't remember the exact uh, title as to what it is, but over the course of the game, this uh, token is going to move around into mm -hmm. one of the four seasons. If you happen to rest during that phase when that token is there and the constellation matches it, mm -hmm. then it will become unexhausted. Exactly. So there's kind of a timing element of like, I have Stardust to spend, mm -hmm. but I also don't want to set somebody else up to take this constellation. Right. So maybe I'll just rest because this is the most ideal time to refresh yes. a card that I have. Yes, and you can rest prematurely when mm -hmm. you think that you can block somebody from right. being able to untap like a really strong ability. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there are also rewards on the constellations uh, for people who just have a star filled in uh, when somebody completes the constellation. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get to take the constellation card, but you get to choose one of the benefits below. Right, because if you've contributed to, let's say there's 10 total dots to be filled mm -hmm. in, and you've contributed some level of uh, of those dots to be filled in, <laughs> the stars, yeah, when you're charting it, yeah. uh, you get a constellation prize, and whoever yes. has the, uh, the most of the leftovers, yes. basically, who did not collect, we'll get first dibs on some of the bonuses that are at the right. bottom, and those can be very helpful yeah, for you. Yeah, the, the bonuses are going to be stuff like points or telescope uh, chits, which is what we find to be very, very useful because mm -hmm. they allow you to observe on multiple constellations instead of just on one card mm -hmm. on your turn. Another one allows you to uh, increase the amount of free stardust you get after you do the rest phase. So mm -hmm. when you rest, you basically reaccumulate stardust so that you can use in your actions phase. Yes. But if you have... Uh, kind of gotten more bonuses when you rest you're going to get more stardust meaning you can now go out and observe, and observe more constellations more in one go mm -hmm. right and so that's essentially it as soon as the game ends then you go into final scoring and everybody has their own sort of asymmetric mat when you flip it over there's a chart that kind of shows what starting elements you you've already crossed off mm -hmm. and depending on how many of those elements you've matched in it, either completing sets or completing multiples of the same type of element, then you'll score a certain number of points. Right, right. And whoever has most points wins at yes. that point. So that's basically the set collection part of it. Yes. It's like, why am I going and gunning for this? Do I like the bonus? Do I like the base points that are on this constellation? Mm -hmm. Or am I trying to get it so that at the end of the game, I've completed my set? 
Or yes. maybe it's a combination of all those things. So right, right, right. there's a lot to think about. Um, yeah. Definitely uh, the way the um, the maps of the stars are laid out, you can never just complete it in one go. So there's a lot of this kind of chicken <laughs> element of like, all right, so I, I, I definitely like that bonus. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to complete this. So I'm just going to get a, a star just charted there so I can get some sort of passive right. uh, benefit when somebody else completes this. And I'm okay with that. Or you can be like Naveen and be super annoying and put like one dot in the middle so that you can't complete it on your turn. And it takes multiple, multiple players, turns. multiple turns to complete a constellation. That was... Naveen was the antagonist in that story. Yeah. So when you're charting uh, these constellations, we may not have been super clear about it. You can only go in one direction. Yeah. There's no backtracking. So let's say I want to spend three Stardust, but from this starting point, it only goes up. Mm -hmm. And there's another space beyond that starting point that you cannot access. It's going to take a whole other turn. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you can start kind of putting these little like dots out there just to sit and turtle just to be annoying to get some passive <laughs> things. And so when other people collect, you know, uh, complete it, then then you'll get something, uh, some sort of bonus out of it. Because you can only write on one constellation. You can only mm -hmm. observe one constellation on your turn, unless you have those telescopes. So if it's just that one dot, because Naveen did the thing, then that's all you get. Yeah. So there's a decent amount of strategy here. Kind of what bonuses do you take at what time? Uh, mm -hmm. What do you value, uh, basically, um, for the rest of the game? Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was okay. It wasn't, uh, uh, I don't know, it was... It was just okay for me. It, the thing about it, I, so it's actually a lot crunchier than I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is n kind of light in rule set, although the rule book is kind of long. Mm -hmm. But when we were learning it, it's not complicated. You know, you can get into it pretty quickly. Uh, but there is a lot of strategy to it, which I was surprised about. But it is a little bit dry. Yeah. And I think that's probably, that's probably what, what it is. That, right? I, I, couldn't, like, like, I couldn't pinpoint what it was, but when we finished playing it, I was just like, I'll play it again, but I'm not like driving to like, okay, let's yeah. get that back to the table ASAP. It, it was a very quiet experience yeah. uh, each time we played it. And it was it was almost like too thinky for what it was because you're just, and it, it's a majority of the time you're, you're just plotting mm -hmm. uh, dots on the cards. Yeah. So it's not like the most riveting game. I right? think that's what it is probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially compared to the crunchier titles that Mind Clash puts out, those are so rich in theme. Mm -hmm. you, you really enjoy, you know, you really enjoy the experience because of what you're doing. And there are a lot of moments in the game that that make you feel like you're into it, right? Yeah, like yeah. you're really engaged. Yeah. And this one is just a little bit more on the dry side. Yeah, I think there, there's a decent amount of player interaction. Like you can convince, like, hey, if you put a big chart, I'll finish it off, you mm -hmm. get the bonus. Like, there's a little bit of that going on, um, but it, it wasn't as engaging as I assumed it was going to be yeah. when we first got the game. We picked this up at Essen, and so I'm glad we got to play it uh, a handful of times, and now we can finally talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the long run, um, I think I'm willing to play it more, but it's not something that I'm going to be asking to play. Yeah, I mean, it's not that long, mm -hmm. and so that's a thing. And like, I guess for us, for midweight games, I guess, which is what this is considered to be, uh, it has to have something that's either really tense, like there's a lot of tension that keeps you like really excited, mm -hmm. or just some, some kind of juice factor, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit missing on that. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, I thought the theme was really cute. That's the thing that kind of intrigued me with the game in the first place. I really enjoyed the, the idea of stargazing and mm -hmm. constellations and such. But yeah, just a little bit dry. Yep. So that is Astra, and that's published by Mind Clash Play. The next two, we have some small card games. This one is from 25th Century Games, mm -hmm. and it is a cycling-themed card game. It's a ladder shedding or ladder <laughs> climbing game and a can shedding game called the Volanimo. Um, this yes. one uh, is a interesting kind of take on ladder climbing where you basically have these uh, different animals that are riding these bicycles <laughs> and you're essentially yes. trying to be the first person to get rid of all of the cards in your hand. First of all, uh, well, actually, first of all, I keep wanting to call this Volamino. Mm -hmm. It's not Volamino, Volanimo. it's Volanimo. Yeah. The N comes before the F. Yeah. M. M. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is, for those of you who are not familiar with the term ladder climbing or uh, card hand shedding, hand shedding, those are terms that we kind of just learned within the past year. If you can think, or if you've ever played a game called Scout, I think that's technically ladder climbing, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That is where we, we learn that term. It's basically where you're trying to one-up the person's hand that they play out in front of them. You're, right. you're yep. constantly trying to beat it. 
And so that's the same concept here. And mm -hmm. then hand shedding, you're trying to get rid of your entire hand first. Yeah, you want to, it's a race to get rid of your hand. Yes. And so if you're familiar with a game called Scout, uh, that's exactly what you're doing in that game. And very similar in this one. The difference is this one's a lot more simple. Mm -hmm. So in this game, you have a deck of cards and they're all numbered. I think it's one through one two, nine. I nine, think. I, I think. Remember and they're all the different animals. Right. You also have um, these hair, hairs, like rabbits, hairs. Rabbit hair, yeah. And they have higher values, like 25, 30 and such. The game is played over the course of five rounds, and on your turn, you're basically going to play a, a hand of cards that are all the same suit or all the same number. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do some math, and that is how you calculate the strength of your hand. For example, if I have a hand of threes, I can play three threes, mm -hmm. and the way that you calculate your hand is you get 10 points per card, plus the lowest value on your cards. So with three threes, that would be 33, 33. Mm -hmm. right? Um, if I had all the same suit, if maybe I played a one, two, three, that would be 31 because right. it's three cards and then the lowest value is a one. one. And then the next player would go and they would try to beat out the hand. They would have to exceed the value. Right. And they can still choose a suit or number. It doesn't matter what I play. They just have to beat out the value. Yeah. So I could pass. Mm -hmm. Maybe I do have something to beat it out, but I think I can get something stronger. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give up my hand right away. Uh, and then you can always hop back in if the, the round or if the cards come back to you. Right. So uh, let's say I did have something to beat it. I would beat it. I would get rid of some cards and it goes on to the next player mm -hmm. until everybody says pass, pass. Once somebody uh, once everybody has gone and passed, then whoever had the highest hand will start again with yes. throwing out a new and hand. You discard the entire stack. Exactly. So that's that's sort of how that goes. The hair cards uh, have to be played by themselves. Mm -hmm. So those are an exception, but they are really high valued cards. I think the highest value is 50. I think 50. Yeah. So you're kind of wanting to hold that one back um, mm -hmm. for like a really big banger, right? Yeah, that's right uh, yeah. They're also the ones, which are the, the tortoises. I think and so, And they yeah. have a leader ability. Uh, for each one that you play in your hand, you get to steal a card from somebody else's hand. And that yeah. is an element that you don't see in a game like Scout. So not only do you steal it, but you can then, then you swap a card oh, yes, from yes, your yes. hand. So if there's something that's kind of clogging up your hand, that's not going to make anything of big value. Yeah. If I played two ones out there, mm -hmm. that would equate to, again, 21, right? Mm -hmm. 10 per card mm -hmm. plus one. With those two ones, I can take one player's hand and steal two cards, look at them and decide, do I want to keep these? Do I want to swap some out mm -hmm. and then give them maybe potentially bad cards? Yes. Or what I think it would be bad cards so that I can create something with this new uh, kind of influx of cards that yeah. I just got. So you it, your hand. It, it's it's good. It's um it was it's exactly the the style of game I like when it's like a, a quick five minute round. Yeah. Um, you're never quite out of the game uh, because of the way that it scores. So right. at the end of every round, um, the person that got rid of their cards first gets uh, one point for every person still left in the game. Mm -hmm. But then that increases depending on the round. So yes. in the later rounds, it's more valuable to go out Yeah, first. you essentially get the points equal to what round you're in for each person who is still in the round. Right. So you want you definitely want to be out first. That's mm -hmm. the whole goal of the game. And then by round five, you're scoring five points per person who's mm -hmm. still in. So, you know, you can be halfway through the game and, and not doing well, but still win by by doing really well towards the end. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought it was really fun. Yeah. It's it's kind of funny, right? <laughs> the theme is really cute. The art is spectacular. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like the addition of those leader cards because it makes for really interesting moments when you're stealing cards from other people right. and potentially ruining their plans. Mm -hmm. Between a game like this and, say, Scout, which is a game that we keep on comparing it to, it's a really, really popular uh, ladder climbing card shedding game as well. Uh, I still prefer Scout mm. over this, mm -hmm. but Scout is a lot more complicated, I feel, especially for people who are not used to playing these kinds of games, or even for younger players. And so for that reason, I think this does have a nice kind of place in that genre of games. Um, if Scout is a little bit too complicated for uh, your family or such, then this is a great one to go to because you're just doing the math on how many cards you played. Yeah, right? this, this one is um, this is like one of those ones like where you're either starting a game night or finishing a game night and you just want to play one more game or you want to get into something while you're waiting for people. Uh, this one is it's pretty good for that. It's placed up to five players, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. And um, we found it. We found it very, uh, very good. I think we're going to keep this one around for a while. So anyway, that is Volanimo by 25th Century Games. All right, next up, we have another small card game. And this one is called Sea Salt and Paper. Mm -hmm. And it's published by Bomix for two to four players. And uh, actually, the first time we heard about this game was on the Gen Con preview list. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I thought it sounded really interesting. It looked really cute. But then we went to Gen Con and we didn't play it. Yeah, we walked <laughs> by the uh, demo booth a couple times, uh, three or four times. And every single time we went by, it was completely full. Mm -hmm. And so we're just like, okay, we're just not going to get to play this uh, this time. Uh, we did get to pick this up, though, at Essen. Yes. And so we finally gotten to play it a couple times now. Yes. So we went to Essen, we picked it up, and then uh, it just kind of sat there for a while. And so uh, we finally, or I finally was able to play it because Rodney <laughs> from Watch It Played uh, started a game with me on Board Game Arena. Mm -hmm. Because this game, if you didn't know, is on Board Game Arena. So if you wanted to play it, you can. Um, but I played it with him and I thought, wow, this is a, this is a different game. Yeah. It is really interesting. And so if you're not familiar with this game, it's basically a push your luck set collection game mm -hmm. where you have this deck of cards and all of the illustrations are this like really super cute origami style mm -hmm. right that's exactly it's it. all like folded paper it, it feels very like if you've ever seen the movie uh, isle of dogs it's kind of <laughs> like that like that art style a little bit i don't know how else to describe it yeah well isle of dogs i think is like claymation it is like claymation but it's like claymation like but like it yeah. looks like paper almost i don't, I don't it's know very, if that makes sense it's a great movie you should yeah. watch it but it, it's very very cute art style and so on your turn, you're basically just drawing two cards from the deck, choosing one to keep in your hand, and discarding the other to one of the two discard piles. Mm -hmm. Or if you like what you see in the discard pile, instead of drawing from the deck, you can just take one off, from the, the, top. off the top of one of the two discard piles. And so a majority of the cards are going to have some sort of uh, set collection scoring. So like, um, I don't know if they're penguins. The penguins are like, if you have two penguins, it's two points. Mm -hmm. If you have one penguin, it's zero no points. points yeah. So the octopus mm -hmm. also has something like that. Mm -hmm. But there are also four different types of duo cards, where if you collect two of the same type of crab, for example, on your turn after uh, taking your turn, you can play them in front of you in order to take its special effect. So it's going to be stuff like the boats, if you collect two boats, um, they'll let you take another turn. Right. Or if you play down a duo of two fish, then you can take the top card off the deck. And if you have several of these duos, you can play several of them, mm -hmm. I believe, to take their effects. Um, one of the funny ones is if you have a shark and a swimmer, mm -hmm. that is a duo. You right. play it in front of you, and now you can steal a card from your opponent. Right. And so the thing that's um, interesting about the game is the way that the game ends. So as soon as either player has... I think it's seven, seven points, points. Seven, yeah. and that's between the cards that are in front of you as well as the ones that are hidden in your hand, uh, then you are eligible to end the round. Mm -hmm. And if you end the round, you have to choose to either stop it immediately, or I forgot what the word is, but... You can basically give everybody else one more chance. Yes. Yeah. I forgot. It's called something. But you can basically give everybody else an extra turn. And depending on which option you choose, that is going to dictate how you score points. Mm -hmm. So if you choose to stop it immediately, then everybody is just going to score their hands and the cards in front of them as normal. If you choose to give everybody an extra turn, then you are saying that you potentially have the highest score amongst mm -hmm. everybody. You're, you're betting on that. And if you are correct, you had the highest score or were tied for the highest, then not only do you score the points on your cards, but you also get a color bonus because all the cards are of different color suits. Mm -hmm. And you basically get one point per card of the color that you have the most, the most. of. Yep. And I believe everybody else only gets their color bonus. That's they right. Don't they don't get, get to, to score, score the actual cards. Yeah. So cards. You, because you're giving everybody else an extra turn, there's kind of this element of like, Okay, is 10 points good enough? Do yeah. I think 10 points is good enough? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say stop it now because I don't know if it is good yeah. enough. Or right. like, oh, I definitely have this. Then, uh, you know, you, you're kind of pushing your luck just a little bit there. Yeah, and if you are wrong, then you only score your color bonus, mm -hmm. I think. Something like that. And everybody yeah. else scores. I, I don't remember that bit because I don't think we've been <laughs> wrong yet. Nobody's been wrong yet, yeah. But uh, it, that, that element of it reminded me of what I like about Cabo, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with that game, or golf, where you're really just trying to uh, bet that you're the person who has the lowest score. Right. And that's pretty much the entire game. You play, you keep on playing several rounds until you've hit a, a cumulative score. Mm -hmm. And so you basically, we basically just play until we're we're oh, done right. playing. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was really neat. Um, I really, really am a sucker for the card design. Yeah, it's really <laughs> the, nice. The um, art really gets me. It really adds to the enjoyment of the game. It's such I a think. simple concept too. You yeah. just draw. You know, you you draw two cards and you make a decision: keep one, give one back. Sometimes you draw the same exact cards. Like, so remember Monique was saying that uh, you have these duo cards. What if you drew both a shark and a fish? Then you choose which or a shark you and want. a swimmer. And you're like, these both need to be together. Now I have to toss one back. Yeah. Which pile should I toss it back in? Because maybe maybe I'm covering up something else that somebody else wants. So right. they're going to clear things out for me. And yeah, then I yeah. can get right back to it. 
at the right time. So um, yeah, the discard element the discard is element. actually strategic. Yeah. Uh, when I discard, I think, okay, maybe if I really want this next turn, maybe I'll discard it so that Naveen won't take it because maybe he'll take the other thing the, the, instead, Yeah, right? so maybe the other thing that I'm not covering up yeah. is something that looks more lucrative to my opponents. Right. So maybe I'll just toss this in the other discard card, uh, discard pile, mm -hmm. and then they'll start drawing from the other one. And yeah. then when it comes back around to me, that card that I had to get rid of because of the rules, it's right there for me. And then I, now I can score and take the bonus on. Yes, yes. So yeah, it's, it's pretty clever. Uh, very, very simple to understand. Yes. Um, and I think that's the best part about that it. That is, yeah. Right? It's so simple in rule set. You get into it immediately. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a mix of strategy and luck. Yeah, the and only thing I would say is um, I wish there was a small little card that had all the different uh, bonuses on it, just yeah. kind of outlined exactly what it is. Yes, the duos. Um, because, you know, you'll have to be thumbing through the rule book to be like, okay, that's exactly what it is. Instead of just here's a card right. that is very in simple text. Granted, only... there's only four. So yeah. the more you play it, the more you'll just memorize it. Exactly. But the first few times we were like, wait, is there a key somewhere? Mm -hmm. There's no mm -hmm. key. Yep. So but we've only played this, by the way, at two. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a fantastic two-player game. I don't know how it would play... At at higher player accounts, but this is definitely a purchase <laughs> that I am really, really, really yeah, glad. Super small, happy about. yeah. Really nice artwork. Uh, very simple to teach. I mean, we'll we'll be keeping this for a very long time. Yeah. So there you go. That is sea salt and paper. Mm -hmm. And what a title, right? Yeah. Good one. <laughs> Okay, the last game that we're going to talk about is the biggest box amongst the four that we have. Mm -hmm. This is from Devere Games as well as Schmidt, and it is called, I, I believe, is Mille Fiori. Please correct us. Please correct us if I'm wrong. I do not know. Uh, it is a two to four player game, and uh, just right up front, I would like to say that this should be only a three or four player game. You think um, so? I think so, yeah. My thoughts on that, but we'll yeah. talk about it in a second. This game. is a, basically, it is a card drafting game uh, where you're going to be placing out your uh, glass pieces onto one of six different areas of the board to try to score points. Mm. Uh, this is a very big point salad style game where each region of the board has a different way that you're going to be able to score. Mm -hmm. The card that you select in the drafting dictates what kind of action you're going to take. The cards are multi-purpose, so if a card has an image on it, that's going to say I can place one of my glass pieces in the region that that image belongs to. Mm -hmm. Or I can say I don't want to do that in the card that I have chosen. I'm going to be able to move a boat a certain uh, distance to score points. Mm. Uh, and essentially what you're going to be trying to do is score the most amount of points by the end of the game. Right. But at the end of the day, it is a drafting game. Mm -hmm. So a majority of the time you're passing around the cards, looking at them, choosing which one you want, and then passing the rest of the hand to the person to your left. So you're potentially looking at the stuff that they're scoring and then giving them the selection for the next round, right? Yeah. One area of the board, you want to try to uh, cluster a bunch of your glass because every time you place it down, you get one point for each one in the cluster. Mm -hmm. Another area of the board, you're trying to score for each uh, consecutive. different consecutive glass. So if, if one area, the first time you put it down, it has two points. If you get to go again and nobody has gone there and you put another one down and it has three points on it, not only do you score the three points, but also the one previous to that five points so mm -hmm. that you can continue to chain. So it gets to this point of like, is anybody going to do anything about this? <laughs> yeah. Is anybody going to stop this? Like, you cannot just let that person just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it becomes like your burden. A lot of this game is like, okay, the burden is on me to stop the bleeding in this one area. <laughs> bleeding is yeah. what this game is about. Yeah. There's another region where you're building uh, pyramids like a triangular mm -hmm. formation of glass. So you need to build the base before you can kind of build up. But every time you build upwards, it rescores. There's a rescoring element Everything to those below. two regions. Mm -hmm. And then every region also has like, a, if you're the first person to uh, to get all five numbers, then you get this bonus and you yeah. get to take a, an extra card, which is essentially an additional action, additional action from yeah. the supplier or uh, something, right? Each region also has a, uh, a bonus for uh, like one of the regions. If you surround a, a particular symbol, then you get to put out uh, a token on uh, a bonus and the bonuses are either valued 20, 15, 10, or five. So you really mm -hmm. want to race to those because that's basically in your actions, you're going to get a free potentially 20 points. Yeah, and yeah, each yeah, region yeah. has their own kind of way to score those. Yes. So it's a, it's a very, very simple game. You know, you, these are your cards, choose one, which ones am I willing to pass, mm -hmm. place a glass or move the ship and score yeah. points. Yeah. It's simple mm -hmm. in rule set. You're, the majority of the time, you're just going to be learning how each region scores. 
Um, that's pretty much the the rules the of the overhead, game. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but the thing about it is, all points are pretty much scored in game, and there's a lot of points. So the the scores are going to fluctuate so much. You're going to be in last place, mm-hmm. and you're going to be in first place, and then you're going to be like really losing and suddenly you're going to be catching up like there, that is the heart of this game there could be a moment where you're you're taking an action to set yourself up for for success in the future where you're like i get one point mm-hmm. your turn <laughs> i get 15 points whoa like okay like that didn't feel good my turn i got one you got 15 but if you play your cards right yeah and if you draft properly and set yourself up properly then maybe you'll have those points where it's like i'm getting 12 i'm getting 15 yes. on my turn and from what i remember i don't think the draft uh changes directions i don't think so right so i was uh next to somebody when we were when we played we played a three-player game of this and i was sitting next to michael you know michael Mm -hmm. is a fantastic gamer and he was doing that region where it was like the consecutive thing you just can't pass and i it was my responsibility to not pass him those cards Mm -hmm. so there's there's some you know there's some of that uh politics and well there's also the uh an element of you can foresee two players in front of you, right? So if I saw Michael was doing this, then I'm passing you cards mm-hmm. saying, it's your responsibility on your turn to yes. stop this while I do something for myself. Yes. Now I'm going to put the, the, the pressure on you right. to be like, Monique, aren't you going to stop this? And that Naveen yeah. did. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> and Naveen won. Uh, so in short, this game is a wild child. Uh-huh. Just the wildest child of the bunch. Uh-huh. Um, it gave me a lot of in-game anxiety, I will say. Uh, it, it's a big uh, feeling of FOMO, if you're familiar mm-hmm. with that term, uh, the fear of missing out. Basically, every time I would see somebody just shoot up in points, I would feel terrible. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like If you're like, it's, taking down one or three points, yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. else gets 15 and the bonus. You yeah, know? even though yeah. I didn't do too well in the end. I'm sorry, I didn't do too bad in the end. I think mm-hmm. I, I got second in that game. During the game, the emotional roller coaster is just too much. It's too yeah. much for my poor heart. <laughs> yeah, and because of this element of... It's, it's not area control, but it's like semi... It feels like area control by mm-hmm. just putting tokens out there. I, I feel like this game is best at three and four players. At two yeah. players, it's just you or me. It, it, it does not seem like enough dynamic there. So I do agree. I think the more players, the better with this one. If you can max out the player account, that's probably the best experience. But I think that there is still room for a two-player game. It's going to be the same experience in the sense that if you're scoring high here, well, I'll do this thing. I, yeah. It's going to be the same kind of a, a pendulum of points. You know what I mean? Just not as interesting. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely much more interesting at higher player counts. And the thing about the game that's good, though, is it's very fast. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It is just uh, such such great table presence. And no matter the player count, it's going to be over pretty quickly. Yep. I, I I don't... What, like an hour? Maybe? I think, yeah. It, it, once we knew the rules, like, yeah. if you're a seasoned gamer, the, uh, the rule set is very, very quick. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, that's how that works. Perfect. Let's just move into it. Yeah. But you have to be okay with the score fluctuating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be okay with not being able to foresee the future and not being able to properly uh, plan strategically. Because sometimes if you're trying to really uh, strategize in one region, sometimes that card might not even come out. When yeah, we're doing you might the not drafting. get it. Yeah. You might not get it. Yeah. So you have to be okay with that. And just, it's one of those games where you just roll with the punches and just have a, a good time and uh, kind of laugh off those moments. It, yeah, that's right? exactly it. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that is Mille Fiore. And that's it. That's those the are all games. The, the four games. Uh, as you can see, board gaming has been a little bit lighter <laughs> in our household as of late. But uh, we have some trips planned coming up as mm-hmm. well as a local convention. And so we are going to be playing a lot more uh, soon. Yep. Until next time, please let us know what games you have been playing. We would love to hear about any games that you're excited about, mm-hmm. especially in the coming year, uh, because we, we hear about a lot of our recommendations through you all we in the comment know. section. Mm-hmm. And uh, hope you are all having a wonderful uh, start to your 2023. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.